Today, we will attempt to cool the i9-14900K processor, which consumes 400 watts of power using various items. We'll start with the three-section AIO cooler, a super tower, a couple of mid-tower coolers, stock coolers, RAM, a chipset heatsink, CPU lids, and end with one-watt heatsinks used for Raspberry Pi. In total, we will test 10 cooling systems and one very hot CPU, and in the end, we will find out what happens to the processor if we allow it to heat up to 115 degrees Celsius. Let's start with the first cooling system, a three-section AIO from Lian Li costing $250, which for some reason is not in the box as it's already next to the computer. I should mention right away that this is not the best AIO for cooling an i9 processor. I had another AIO that cooled the CPU even better when it was young and not degraded. More on that later. This processor could reach power consumption levels of 4 400 watts. Here's proof. In tests, almost 400 watts. However, this AIO, despite its price, cools slightly worse, although it looks better and has a display. Nevertheless, despite everything mentioned above, this AIO will serve as the benchmark in this video. I should also show you the temperature at which the results were recorded, 33 degrees Celsius. Honestly, I want to die right now. I won't be gentle with this AIO. I'll immediately turn the power limit to unlimited. Under these conditions, the CPU consumes 260 to 280 watts and heats up to 105 degrees, while maintaining almost a maximum frequency of 5.6 gigahertz on all cores. Even the cat was stunned by such powerful power. Today, we will only be testing two games, Cyberpunk and Minecraft Bedrock, because both are capable of loading the CPU on all 32 threads. In Cyberpunk, with a consumption of 200 watts, the processor holds 5.7 gigahertz and delivers 120 FPS. As you can see, the GPU is underloaded. Regarding Minecraft, unfortunately, this processor has degraded a bit and after six months of use, it stopped holding the stock voltage in some programs. Therefore, for Minecraft, I always add plus 100 millivolts to the voltage for stability. And in Minecraft, power consumption reaches 300 watts. The CPU slightly lowers the frequency while chunks are loading, and the maximum FPS was 40 frames. Here's what the processor delivers at 200 watts and unlimited consumption in Cinebench. The difference is not very significant, to be honest. As for the results, in my opinion, not bad. The AIO dissipates 280 watts of heat, but how much heat will the next Minecraft block? I think it should be said right away, this is not an ad for this strange cooler. I added it to the tests only because it is the most gigantic tower suitable for the 1700 socket. The Deep Cool Assassin 4 is a super tower with seven heat pipes, costs 90 bucks, which is almost three times less than the previous AIO. With a claimed heat dissipation of up to 280 watts and a noise level of only 22 decibels. Sounds good, looks better on camera than in real life. They included a whole 1.5 grams of free thermal paste. Warning, remove before installation. But what if I don't remove? Let's check it out. The cooler is very easy and intuitively simple to install. Clearly designed for those who break everything they touch. And for that, I give the manufacturer a plus, although I still think it's overpriced. Damn, 105 degrees on the desktop. I barely managed to extinguish this monster. So, with a 15 watt power limit, the processor scores 2,500 points in CPU-Z and heats up to only 60 degrees. The frequencies seem low. Let's give it some gas. 35 watts, and the temperatures are perfect. Wow. It scores 6,000 points on paper. For a moment, that's the level of the i9-9900K, and 80% of gamers worldwide dream of such performance. I'm impressed by how powerful this sticker is. I'm ready to conquer new frequencies. Let's try 50 watts. Ooh, unfortunately our sticker couldn't handle 50 watts, resulting in a local overheat and the computer shutting down. I'm confident that if we give this piece of paper a week or two to properly soak up the thermal paste, just kidding, forget it. Let me put this big block back and show you the real results. I'm shocked. But this tower actually dissipates 280 watts of heat. The temperatures are, of course, high, but look at the power consumption. In Cinebench, it even scored more points than the three-section AIOs. 
Turns out it's a pretty good cooler. With a 200 watt limit, the temperatures are excellent. In games, the performance is similar to the AIO, and in Minecraft, the consumption even spiked to 308 watts. This cooler is fantastic. I really liked it. In terms of noise, it's still louder than the AIO at idle, but not too bad. The next tower has four heat pipes, which is three less than in the previous one, is named this way, costs three times less than the previous cooler, and nine times less than the AIO. Its claimed TDP is 130 watts. At first glance, it looks good, but on camera, it looks worse than in real life. The heat pipes are nickel plated but have direct contact. The base is flat and it comes with free thermal paste. Installing it is incredibly inconvenient. You curse it 10 times while screwing the mount to the motherboard. To secure it to the motherboard, you have to remove the fan and then as you start tightening it, you realize you're not threading it correctly. You angrily unscrew it and realize you've damaged the thread and now need to file down a few threads to screw it back in. After successfully filing the thread and screwing in the mount, you notice the plate is bent, even though you didn't apply any pressure. The mounting system, by the way, is the same as the previous Deepcool, but unlike Deepcool, this product is budget friendly and the manufacturer saved on everything they could, including the metal, as you can see. I hope the flimsy mounts and inconvenient installation are the worst I'll see from this tower. If it also cools poorly, it's a disgrace to such coolers. I'll start with the claimed 130 watts, and it actually holds 130 watts quite well. I can see with the naked eye that there's a margin because 85 degrees is a laughable temperature for the 14,900K, far from the 105 degrees limit. How about 150 watts? The CPU frequency immediately jumped by 300 MHZ, and the temperature didn't even approach 100 degrees. Well, almost. What am I waiting for? Let's see what it can do. 170 watts. The frequency increased by another 200 MHZ. The temperatures look scary, but the PC didn't shut down, so the cooler is coping. In games, the frequency isn't 5.7, but the FPS in Cyberpunk is still around 120 frames. In Minecraft, the frequencies drop to 4.6 GHz, but the chunks still load quickly. For an i5 like the 13600K, this tower is perfect. If only it were easier to install, it would be ideal. The next Pokemon is from the same brand, but with only two heat pipes, costing only seven bucks and 50 cents, which is three times cheaper for the previous cooler and 33 times cheaper for the AIO, and a claimed TDP of 85 watts. Unlike its older brother, it has not a 120 millimeter, but a 90 millimeter fan and a more convenient ring mounting system. I don't know why, but I like this more. Damn, what a setup. Look at what happened. Well, I'm probably overheated from this cursed heat. You can install it and throttle for life. I barely turned on the computer when the radiator was already burning my hands. The cooler holds 85 watts easily at only 80 degrees, 100 watts, plus 10 degrees, 130 watts, already 100 degrees, and unlimited, the same 130 watts and 100 degrees. So 130 watts is the limit. But I saw on the internet that there's a boosted version of this cooler, which costs a little more and has not one, but two fans, and a TDP of not 85, but 100 watts. And I thought, why not check this cooler with two fans? Damn, this is getting tiring. If you didn't understand what just happened, you're probably not living in Ukraine. The additional fan added a free 20 watts, and I noticed that the i9 is degrading not by days, but by hours. Even Cinebench won't start without an additional plus 20 millivolts. Despite the meager cooler, the processor delivers better performance than the 32 core Threadripper. In games, performance is still quite good. I think this cooler is a decent competitor to our next cooling monster when building a budget PC from scratch. And now, the brand new Intel Laminar Boxed Cooler which costs two times more than the previous cooler and 17 times more than the AIO is rated at 65 watts. But I feel like the manufacturer is lying and this little guy can do more. It's very easy to install and remove, but some people might encounter difficulties during installation. For example, I might have some. At its 65 watts, we can get 10,000 points in CPU-Z and 85 degrees on the cores. At 85 watts, 90 to 95 degrees, and 100 watts, 100 degrees. The maximum this little guy can dissipate is 110 watts of heat. Threadripper's a bit better, but in games, despite the frequency dropping by a whole gigahertz, 
FPS almost didn't drop. We lost only about 10%, but the processor's power consumption was almost half. So maybe forget about those 5.7 gigahertz. Minecraft lost only five frames. Next are custom cooling systems. I made a strategic decision to reduce the processor's power limit to 35 watts via BIOS. It can still be raised through Windows later, but for now, the processor shouldn't overheat while the PC is booting. The next candidate is very similar to the previous one, with the difference that it was designed 18 years ago. It's a boxed cooler for the 775 socket. Got to me for free and it is infinitely cheaper than all previous coolers. As you can see, Intel has made significant progress in processor cooling over these 18 years. Comparing the amount of metal, the new cooler is even smaller, but the weight remains the same. Even though I don't have a scale, I can feel it. They only added a copper core in the center. Now I'll transfer the thermal paste from the previous player to the new old one, and we can begin. I should have studied to be an economist. I would have saved even more now. But that's not all. Now I'll go rip off a fan from the water cooler. It's racing grade, ready to conquer untamed frequencies and undissipated watts of heat for a small price. While removing one, I realized I had to remove them all. What a shame. For 250 bucks, they could have made the fan removal system easier. I almost got tangled up trying to remove the one fan. Here it is, spinning up to 2,450 RPM, and it's 120 millimeters. I hope it will help me dissipate the megawatts of heat from my half-dead processor. It holds 65 watts just as well as the modern variant. The maximum our 775 cooler can handle is 85 to 90 watts of heat, with temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Celsius. The Threadripper has pulled far ahead, but remember, this guy consumes 250 watts, and our CPU consumes only 90 watts. Games run very well on a piece of aluminum, though this time the frequencies are like those on some souped-up Xeon from AliExpress that's been retired for 30 years. Who needs those 5.7 gigahertz when we have 90 frames per second at 3.7? In Minecraft, I think it's already advisable to reduce the render distance of chunks, but it's still playable. The contact is just perfect. The next item I'm going to use to cool the processor needs some modifications because it doesn't fit in the socket space. As you can see, it's server RAM from Mac Pro 1.1 to be exact. These sticks are from a time when even memory modules had their own processor or graphics card, judging by what they look like. Imagine, one module can consume up to 20 watts and there could be eight of them in a computer. 160 watts just for the RAM. Insane computer, everything in it was powerful. So at a minimum, these heat sinks can dissipate 20 watts of heat, but that's in full volume. Now I'll cut part of them off. Well, I think these heat sinks have a great future. Soon we'll be able to play Cyberpunk with their help. And for better contact, I'll tie the heat sinks with a string. 25 watts and already 90 degrees. 35 watts, overheating. I'll have to figure something out at 25 watts because nevertheless, it scores 4,000 points with such modest power consumption. In the Cinebench ranking, we have sunk below the floor. Even a laptop i9 outperforms us. In games, it's even worse. 33 frames per second at 31 watts. I somehow think it's due to the critically low processor frequencies, so I disabled most of the cores, leaving only six performance ones, and the result is obvious, 60 to 70 frames per second, but 35 watts is too much. I inhaled aluminum shavings from those heat sinks while cutting them and thought, why not disable all the performance cores and leave the efficiency ones? And look what this processor does on efficiency cores, 60 FPS at just 25 watts. Processor doesn't overheat at all. Of course, you can't disable all the performance cores. At least one must remain. If you disable it in the game, stability worsens. Next, I put a radiator from Asus, secured it properly, and it's an exact copy of the RAM heat sinks, although a couple of degrees worse. So we won't linger on it and move on. Processor lids, four pieces from 775 CPU, which need to be polished a bit for better contact with each other. That's better. I have less and less thermal paste, so it's time for strict economy. I had to scrape off the thermal paste from everything it was on. Well, I'm not a millionaire to buy new thermal paste every day, all right? As one old man used to say, thrift must be thrifty. 
And still, the thermal paste wasn't enough. This is how it will look. I'll also add these heat sinks on top. They will bind the lids together. I also added a little fan, which didn't really change much, but it needed to be mentioned. Oh my god, 70 degrees at 70 watts! Later, I rearranged the lids, placing them directly on top of each other, and the result was better. But the situation is critical. At 25 watts, the PC is clearly not as fast as it was at the same 25 watts with radiators. So I made the strategic decision to remove those shameful radiators from the processor lids and install the Asus radiator, securing everything properly. I managed to push the processor to 35 watts, achieving an impressive frequency of 2.9 GHz on the efficient cores. Additionally, I undervolted the processor by 50 millivolts, which gave an extra 200 MHZ on the cores. Now we have a cosmic 70 FPS in Cyberpunk. The temperatures are off the charts, but the PC doesn't shut down and is completely stable. I tested it for a long time, but that's all child's play compared to the next cooling method. The reason you came here. I set the maximum CPU temperature in the BIOS to 115 degrees. I completely removed the shameful thermal tape from the heatsink because it trans transfers heat worse than regular thermal paste. Now we'll find out what Raspberry Pi heatsink are capable of in terms of cooling one of the world's hottest processors! It looks very reliable. I won't even secure it because I don't know how. 86 degrees on the desktop without any load, consuming only 9 watts. But I think we can play on this. And here's why. I have a trump card that I haven't mentioned throughout the video, and now I'll show it to you. All this time, Cyberpunk has been running on maximum graphics settings, which significantly affects not only the GPU, but also the CPU. So now I'll lower them to the minimum. I already undervolted the CPU and increased the power consumption to 10 watts. And what is this if not success? 30 plus frames per second. If you increase the power consumption to 12.5 watts, the computer turns into a rocket. 35 to 45 frames, and it's almost comfortable to play. I played like this for another half an hour, then increased the power consumption to 13.5 watts, and the maximum temperature was 106 degrees, but the PC didn't shut down because it was still far from 115. Now, let's try running the PC without any heat sinks. Ooh, 93 degrees right out of the box, but playing like this is very difficult. 113 to 115 degrees across all cores, plus the frequency doesn't rise above 800 MHC, giving us between 1 and 5 frames per second. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you did. Thank you for your attention.